Here we are. So, so what do we have here? This is like Taiwan. These are the rocks. These are the rocks that I think from Taiwan are are, are the best because it keeps it gets so hot down here. That, These, that's the the scientific sound it makes. Yes, 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 yes. The three main things that make Taiwan kind of world famous for geologists would be. Hopefully you already watched the previous video I made with the Taiwan rock guy. If not, I highly recommend watching that video first, which you will have a link to down in the description. Because in this video, we're going to continue on this journey about Taiwan and the different rock types, learning once and for all what makes Taiwan truly unique in the world. But of course, also what makes the Taiwan rock guy himself unique as well. I was in the Boy Scouts in the USA. I went to a public school that started offering Chinese when I was in eighth grade. And that was also around the same time that I started thinking rocks are really cool. Very passionate <laughs> about rocks. If we just back up then, you said like you've studied Chinese since you were like 13, yeah, which is like, a, yeah. it's a very, it's a very young age to even be like, you know, influenced by Chinese. I didn't mm -hmm. even have that option until mm -hmm. I like, came here to Taiwan. How do we go from like learning Chinese from a very young age to like actually physically ending up here in Taiwan? I remember the first day of my like classes, our teacher focused on learning this language as a introduction to a completely different culture. For my final exam, if I could memorize Zhou Jielun, the Cai Hong, Rainbow by Zhou Jielun. If I could memorize that whole song, I'd get like five points off my final. And so I did. And that's actually the first Chinese song I learned. Uh, I'm not singing today. Okay. That's why I thought it was so awesome. I thought Chinese, well, Chinese is so unique. Like I introduced to this whole world. And so when I went to college, I became one of my majors. I was in Taichung for about a summer semester in 2017 at their, in their Chinese language program. That's when I decided, okay, Taiwan's the spot. <laughs> I gotta go back. So when I graduated from college, I had found any way I could. And I, so I found teaching English first with uh, Fulbright Taiwan, which is a uh, like a US uh, program, US government program. So you've been in Taiwan now since 2018? Okay, I had a little break in between. So I had one year, I was teaching English at, in Taidong for one year. You can reapply, but I was kind of thinking like, Oh, one year is fine, I'll go back to the USA and I'll figure something out. But I also started having these crazy lucid dreams. I'm not kidding. Like the first few months after I came back from Taiwan, I had these lucid dreams of like, I was in Taidong and I saw these like islands, but the islands were full of pine trees and stuff, but they're out, out in the ocean. I'm like, that's not Taidong, but I feel like I'm in Taidong. I'm like, I must be dreaming. And then at that time I like, flew to my old school and I saw my old coworkers and I, I was like, I was like so emotional, filled with emotion. I woke up, I literally woke up with tears in my eyes. And I was like, I've had, I had many of these dreams of being like, wow, Taidong really left a serious impression on me. And then while I stayed in the US for two years, I just kept finding ways like I need to go back. I need to go back. And so Fulbright actually reached out to me again and I had another opportunity to teach English, but in Penghu. I was like, oh yeah, I'll do it. Why not? And so that's how I got back. So I got back in 2021, but I was super sick. I had a lot more opportunities to do more natural science teaching. Even though it was an English class, I still got to bring in my science stuff. And that's why I went to Donghua University to do environmental education. I can teach English, right? But I want to teach science. We're going to get into like the, the rocks and, and all of that later. Like, don't worry. We're going to talk about this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Not talking about rocks is making my <laughs> blood boil, man. Cause I'm just looking at this, all these guys, there's all these rocks right in front of me. And the fact that I'm not talking about them. Oh my God. Uh, other than maybe I need some water. Okay. <laughs> What I like about Penghu the most was the uh, the beaches. The beaches in Penghu are awesome. Like the beaches in Penghu, they're super sandy. There's a ton of them and you can watch so many beautiful sunsets. If you're not too afraid of feeling like locked in on an island, it's an awesome spot. It's kind of, it makes you feel nice and small. It makes you feel like, oh, this is comfy. But that's Penghu. And then Taidong. I really like Taidong because Taidong and Hualien, I think the main unique thing is the indigenous culture. I think that's something that a lot of people like you know, not to bash on my, my my Taiwanese friends, I think a lot of Taiwanese people don't know necessarily about the different, all the different tribes and all different, you know, diversity of indigenous culture in Taiwan. And I think that when you live in Taidong and when you live in Hualien, you you get to know these cultures and get to know like what's what were the big differences between you know Amis people or Bunun people or um, Puyuma Beinanzu. Like these are these are. You know, if that sounded like gibberish to you, I mean, you should probably go to Taidong and then uh, talk to some people around there because there's so many unique things about like how the indigenous folks, like lifestyles, how they, their food and like their celebrations are all so unique. That's one of the main things that also made me want to stay 
in this area because then finding the connections between geology and these indigenous cultures like jade jade tools or uh, slate homes like the, the architecture that was built uh, is also super unique. I think the food is better in Taidong than in Hualien. Okay. I think that there's a really really good veggie spot in Taidong called Shifang Veggie, like sure like little sure like fang like like the one that's like like fang. Yeah, that like, fang. Uh, ba, ba fang. Yeah, like ba, ba fang the ba, ba, ba fang the fang, ba, ba, fang right? Ba fang the fang. <laughs> yeah, ba fang the fang, and then sure like ten. That vegetarian place is crazy good. So it's oh. like Shifang and Ji. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Oh, it's... There's a lot of trails uh, you can go on, like small hiking trails in Taidong and in Hualien that get you so close, so up close and make you feel so small and insignificant. Feeling that, small... That's how you sell it? I want to go there and feel really insignificant? I mean, like there's something to be said about feeling like, wow, I am just a little speck, right? If, you, if you've ever felt that way, I mean, like maybe in the city you feel insignificant because you're surrounded by all these people. You're like, wow, I'm just like one little person in this sea of people. But when you're in Hualien or when you're at the beach side looking out at like at the sun rising or looking at the moon reflect over the ocean waves or when you're up at Ho Huan Mountain looking out over these giant like mountain ranges, you feel insignificant for a completely different reason. You feel like nature is just so enormous and powerful and that makes you feel like it, this must be cherished. It's something to be treasured. I think we can also ex like show what, what you brought over here now. Like you're the, you, I think you're the first person who has like brought like props to, <laughs> to one of these interviews. Well, it's all uh, teachers, you know, teachers, you know, you know, it's fun. It's nice to have tools, right? It's nice to have things that help you out in the classroom. Here we are. So, so what do we have here? This is like Taiwan. These are the rocks. These are the rocks that I think from Taiwan are, are, are the best. You can think about this. Every mountain eventually is going to turn flat over a long period of time. Like the mountains, all mountains are slowly like imagine like like wind and rain, like every single particle of wind or every single raindrop is holding like a little ax. It's chopping away at mountains or any sort of rock it touches. And they eventually turn into something like this. This is a sedimentary rock which formed in Penghu. And so this is like just sand and then a bunch of little shell particles basically a ton full of fossils, like a bunch of shells. Like, so this is an environment, right? This is a snapshot of a time, a period of a place frozen in time. This is like a graveyard, right? This is like a, like a, like a creature graveyard or of a- I don't want to touch little it now. Shell, you, little shell like this. This one around my neck. Let me just check this baby out. There's no like waxiness. There's no Vaseline glue or anything to make this look so shiny. I don't know why I'm showing it to yeah, the camera. The yeah. micro <laughs> this is not a camera, this is a microphone. This is a microphone, okay? I know this, this is a microphone. This is something that you would be really rare, but you might still find at Qixingtan. This is a pink rock called rose stone, and they, the, the pink mineral in it is called rhodonite. And so, I mean, it's not, it doesn't have a technical term, but it's just a, the pinkness in it is the chemical called manganese. So it's a manganese rich metamorphic rock. But they're also super rare because this stuff also was collected in mass amounts and sold in the in the 80s and late 70s in Taiwan. This is my master's thesis. I basically did a uh, uh, description of a, uh, tried tried to be as simple as I could to explain uh, Hualien's geology. Hopefully you could pick this up in a year or so, but so- Oh, you mean like the book, not, this, the, whole, not the concept? No, 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 this <laughs> book. Like, I still haven't <laughs> oh picked up, gosh. I still haven't picked up on the concept. This is like magnetic. Yeah, this is a mech. This is called serpentinite. Taiwan jade comes from this rock. It was formed in in the lenses, in the veins, almost you know, like veins in your skin, in a serpentinite rock. It's magnetic because it's been metamorphosed. This used to just be some lame or kind of cool igneous rock, kind of cool lava rock, and this got basically cooked again and squeezed under intense pressure, and the black stuff turned into the mineral magnetite. So it's magnetic, 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 which is just iron and oxygen. And then the green stuff, <laughs> the green stuff turned into either serpentine, this this green mineral, which is looks very similar. It's a little shinier, looks very similar to nephrite, but it's not see-through and it's a, not as hard. This is like basically an evolved rock. I, I wanted to talk about like the little bit uh, different rock. Like, so these rocks are all from Taiwan. Yes. But they look very different. Mm -hmm. Could you just walk me through, like, just geographically, like the the rocks that are from different regions of Taiwan? If we were to, so we, we know jade. So this is like only found in Hualien. Hualien, not found at Jade Mountain. Marble, Eastern Taiwan, Hualien and Taidong, marble, East Taiwan. What do we got here? 
Andesite. <laughs> I don't look at, for, don't look I at me. I thought you were going to answer it like, for some reason. I thought you were going to be like, I thought you were going to help me answer it for some reason. I just, I've been vibing. I think like, oh yeah, we're talking about rocks now. Everybody knows about what andesite is. Volcanic rock. This is found on the coastal range, also eastern Taiwan and in Liudao and Lanyu. So far off uh, outlying islands. Sandstone. Fossil rich sandstone. This can be found in a lot of Tainan and Kaohsiung also. So the west coast has is known for their fossils. That's one of the big things that I don't have because I haven't I don't really explore a lot of I've explored almost any of Western Taiwan, if I'm being honest. So that's what I'm missing here is I'm missing a lot of the sedimentary rocks and all the cool fossil rich rocks that Western Taiwan has to offer. So if you like rocks, you want to show me a cool rock and you live in Western Taiwan, maybe I can re reach out to me because that's what I don't have here. So gotcha. go back to here, igneous rock, lava rock from the outlying islands of Taiwan, metamorphic rocks from Eastern Taiwan, and then sedimentary rocks from Western Taiwan with fossil. I love Taiwan just because of like the, the wide variety of yes. like the high mountains and like the beaches and everything. Mm -hmm. From a rock perspective, it sounds like it would be even more fascinating. Yeah. It is. is there a difference like altitude wise? Like, for example, like the top of the mountain mm -hmm. and like the bottom of the same mountain or at the beach, would that be like, look the same to you? Or, or is it interesting, like from an altitude level as well? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I mean, if you love if you love rocks, you also just love being outside. And when you're at the top of a mountain, you just look out over the landscape. It's just the best feeling ever. It's like this giant, especially Taiwan has these arcing, just rolling mountain ranges. If you look at Taiwan and you cut it from the east to the west, the rocks in the east are the oldest, and you and then everything oh. west of Taiwan are are lower and lower metamorphic grade. So like, for example, what I mean by metamorphic grade is how, essentially how long something got cooked or baked. So a lot of the central mountain range in Taiwan are slate or just a cooked mud. And why is, why is, there, why is there cooked mud now in the mountains? The, the rest of the majority of Taiwan used to just be an ocean, ocean bottom. And oh, what is the, at the bottom of an ocean? Just tons of slime, muddy slime, and it just sits in the bottom of the ocean. And that stuff got pushed upwards. And as it got pushed, it got cooked and hardened. So like from a rocks perspective, the tops of Taiwan is honestly not that interesting to me okay. because it's all just cooked mud. Like the top of Taiwan's mountains are all just, majority is like cooked mud, which is like basically fancy mud. And that's also fancy mud that's like turned into plates essentially, which mm. is what a lot of indigenous folks used in the mountain tribes. They use this as a construction material. They use slate to build homes because it's so flat and also water resistant and also can be, and it's pretty st stiff too. So like from a rock perspective, the mountain ranges in Taiwan, they're all right, but it's mostly about the view. To get, to get real close up looks at rocks, like pretty, pretty rocks, it's honestly nice to stay at the beach sides or at least like on the flatlands because um, you have the rivers, the power of Taiwan's rivers, which are so extreme. There's typhoons and there's earthquakes, which means that as mount these mountains are also rising, they're also being destroyed at one of the world's fastest rates. Like Taiwan's mountains are rising, but also being washed away. So what you have are these super wide river valleys, which essentially show you a side view of all the rocks. Mm, so, it's like Taroko Gorge. Yeah, style. like Taroko. And and also all around Taiwan, you have these giant rivers, these huge river valleys, which are rarely full of water, but they just left it behind a lot of rocks. You know, you can find a lot of cool rocks just by cr crawling up river valleys and seeing the side view. So for if you want to look really close at rocks, staying lower is usually better because the river is doing all the work for you. You don't need to cut open a rock to see what's inside. Now, geologists love to see what's inside a rock but the river is naturally cut, cut it for you. If I would go out on the beach and I would look for like a pretty rock. Yeah. I would, <laughs> yeah. All it's rocks pretty, are pretty. It's so excited. I, I would just look at like the, the shape. Oh, this kind of looks like a heart. Yeah. This looks like, like a little stick or something. Uh -huh. So it's like a unique way for me. But for, for like just fresh beginners who wants to get into these different like types of rocks, for example, mm -hmm. what, what would be like the, the day one thing you will teach them? Like, what should they look for? How mm. should they like analyze it from like the, the day one beginner level point of things? If you want to get to know rocks, you should familiarize yourself with minerals. Minerals are the things that make up rocks. 
And once you can identify minerals, then you can start feeling, you know, kind of special, like, oh, I know what that is inside of it. You should get yourself familiarized with this mineral right here. This is called quartz, you can check it out. Quartz is the most common mineral in the world. It's silica, one silica and two oxygens. And it's super hard. Many, many crystals you see around are made out of quartz. And so mm. if you can identify quartz, there's some ways you can do it. It's hard, so it's got a hardness of seven. It can scratch certain things. So like knowing like if you can take it and you have maybe a penny or a nail and you can, if you can scratch it, and if it leaves a mark or it doesn't leave a mark, that can be a way to identify quartz. Getting to know quartz, like for example, this is the one that I found in uh, found in uh, in Hualien here too, in northern Hualien. That's it's a, like see through. Yeah, it's a quartz can be quartz can be almost entirely translucent or it can be really white. The three main things that make Taiwan kind of world famous for geologists would be how it formed, how active the landscape changes, and then also the unique metamorphic rocks. So those are like the main three things that Taiwan is pretty much a playground for geologists. Amazing, you really are the, the Taiwan rock guy. <laughs> I don't know the most about rocks here in Taiwan. Like I am not a geology PhD, but I would like to say that from what I do know, I can help you digest that information better than somebody who maybe knows three to four times more to, than me about these rocks. In, in Taiwan, an earthquake is happening because two plates are at odds and the the Philippine ocean plate is pushing towards pushing towards the continent of Eurasia. But when when plates are moving apart, like in Iceland, that's when volcanoes form. Like you can kind of think about the gotcha. center of the earth is really hot. The center of the earth is never gonna get hotter. It's always gonna keep cooling off. Things that are hot are always gonna try to cool down, release its energy. Just like when we get hot, we sweat. So you can kind of think that a volcano is kind of like the earth sweating. So the earth is really hot and it needs to find a way to that heat to escape the outside. And when, it, when that heat finally escapes, it comes out in the form of a volcano. And then when a volcano happens, it's pushing those, those two chips away. But how come then Taiwan both have earthquakes and volcanoes? Volcanoes don't just happen at where plates are coming apart. Okay. Volcanoes can also happen where when two plates come together, there's usually a winner, right? One, mm -hmm. one plate is more buoyant and one plate is more dense. And so when they come together, one is gonna slide underneath the other. And we know that the center of the earth is super hot, right? The center of the earth is so hot as you move f closer and deeper into the earth, the rocks get hotter and hotter too. For example, these two plates are coming together. One is gonna start sliding underneath. As that moves down, it's gonna start to melt a little because it keeps, it gets so hot down here. That, these, that's the, the scientific sound it makes. Yes, 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 yes. So like with these rocks down here, at the bottom here, they're gonna get too hot, they're gonna get too hot and they're gonna melt. And when those rocks melt, they get bubbly and they have a lower density, right? So like when, like a bubbly soda, it gets super bubbly and when you open it up, it all, all the air releases outward. Well, that gas needs to go somewhere and so it gets low, it also lower density. So like it wants to go back up, rise back up to the surface and form a volcano. The coolest part about this area, I mean, just all of Taiwan, is that you don't really need to go far to see a really textbook quality rock of metamorphic, igneous and sedimentary rocks. So all the three main rock types are very accessible in, in Taiwan and you don't need to go too far to see them. To see really nice, really nice ones too. No more questions. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with Alice in like, ends with S, ends with subscribe. Please do both and see you all in the next one. Wow. <laughs> Look at L with like, S, and subscribe. That's good.